This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. Good morning, my Real News Media TV family. Thank you so much for tuning in this morning, and I'm wishing for everyone a wonderful and a productive day. And in the news this morning for July 28, 2023, several injured in Palisados road crash. Several people were rushed to hospital following a two-vehicle collision involving a bus and a taxi on the Palisados Main Road in Kingston on Thursday night. The circumstances that led to the accident are still unclear, but information reaching the news is that the incident occurred about 8 p.m. Up to publication time, firefighters on the scene were attempting to free the taxi driver from the mangled remains of the vehicle. Three people said to be passengers of the taxi were reportedly rushed to hospital after suffering injuries in the collision. Police commissioner responds decisively after Federation chairman fires a first salvo. Firebrand head of the Jamaica Police Federation, Corporal Rohan James, is facing the fight of his life after the police high command moved to sanction him following his recent declaration that battle lines have been drawn over the non-payment of overtime amounts to some cops. James has been suspended from all duties at a three-quarter pay and is to face a court of inquiry where if he is found guilty, the sanctions could range from a lengthy suspension, demotion, and at its most extreme dismissal from the Jamaica Constabulary Force. He is being accused of conduct contrary to the discipline, good order, and the guidance of the force and is facing four charges including being disrespectful to seniors in rank and communicating to the public certain sensitive issues within the JCF without permission from Police Commissioner Major General Anthony Anderson. He has been out of line in many of his comments since he has been chairman of the Federation, but this time he crossed the line with statements that were rude, disrespectful, and to some extent blatantly false, a police source told the news on Thursday. Even some members of the rank and file, who he claimed to have been speaking on their behalf, have expressed a disappointment with his tone and what could be considered the threats which he issued at that funeral, the source added. The funeral was that of Constable Damon Blair at Old Harbor New Testament Church of God in St. Catherine on July 15. In a hard-hitting address, James warned that the Federation would not be muzzled, intimidated, or bamboozled by the High Command in respect to overtime payments to which the court has ruled they are entitled. We negotiate with the government, not with high command. The Council of Deputies has no moral authority to tell us what to do when a court orders that we are to be paid overtime and that they should put in place a mechanism to capture hours so the membership can be paid. I am not going to negotiate with high command. Let the record be made clear that the battle lines have been drawn, James had warned. I also want to say to the High Command that the Council of Deputies must focus on their errors assigned to them and to leave the issue capping hours at work because this federation that I lead is not going to be submissive to the place where rank and file membership leaves the citizens of Jamaica compromised in their safety. It will never happen under my watch, mark my word, James declared to muted applause. And I also want to say to the High Command and to our Commissioner, God help you if the membership is not paid their overtime come this month. I am tired of the abuse being meted out and believing that the persons can call me to intimidate me. I have not seen the man or woman that is going to lead me into fear so that I will retreat from doing what the membership has asked me to do. When I was elected, it is because I have the capacity, the will, and the power to do it. We are entrenched in law as a police federation body, and nobody is going to compromise it. Politics nor nothing will come in the path of the execution of the Federation's role, added a militant James. But the news sources say James should be well aware that more than 90% of the overtime claims submitted by members of the JCF have been paid. There are some cases where the overtime has not been paid because of human errors. There have been some issues in some areas in the new work management system, which is used to calculate the overtime payments and there have been issues where people are claiming to up to 90 hours overtime, including times when they have attended funerals, added one source. There is also an issue where someone of a lower rank, such as a corporal, wanted to approve the overtime payment 
for someone of a higher rank, such as an inspector, and when that is rejected, they argue that it is because of the division that they are in, added the source. Following the comment by James at the funeral, the high command launched a probe and on Wednesday, he was informed that the police commissioner directed that disciplinary action be taken against him at a court of inquiry. It is therefore desirous and in the public interest that you cease to perform duties in keeping with Regulation 351 of the Police Service Regulations 1961. You are hereby interdicted from duty to receive a three-quarter salary with immediate effect, James was told in a letter dated July 26. He was also ordered to immediately hand over his JCF identification card and all government property in his possession, which the sources pointed out is standard procedure when a cop is interdicted. James has also been warned that he should not leave the island without the permission of the Governor-General and should provide the head of the Kingston Western Police Division with contact information for himself as well as his next of kin. There is no indication yet as to when the court of inquiry will begin. In the meantime, Corporal Arlene McBean, who was unceremoniously dumped as a chairman of the Federation in January 2019, seems sent to retake the position at least for now. McBean, who is the Federation's General Secretary, will act as chairman while James is on interdiction or until its council appoints an acting head of the body which represents rank and file members of the JCF. She was ousted through a no-confidence vote by members of the then-Federation executive after she was accused of circumventing rules and the procedures governing the Federation. McBean was unsuccessful in her challenge of the decision in court. Man who caused a security scare in Ocherios fined $1 million or nine months in prison. Chevon Flowers, the man who caused a security scare in Ocherios St. Anne last month, was yesterday ordered to pay $1 million or serve nine months in prison when he appeared in the St. Catherine Parish Court. Flores pleaded guilty last month to using a computer for malicious communications and was sentenced by senior parish court judge Desiree Alain. The judge admonished and discharged Flores on the charge of creating public mischief, which she said was the same as malicious communications. The Crown also made no order on the charge of extortion. The court heard that on June 3, Flowers uploaded a video to social media causing a security scare in Ocho Rios. Following investigations by the police, Flowers was arrested and charged. Attorney demands a timeline for process to grant a Haitian migrants a refugee status. Marcos Gov, one of the attorneys representing the group of 37 Haitians seeking asylum in Jamaica, has complained that a legal team has not received an outline of the procedure and the timeline to be followed by the government toward granting refugee status. Mr. Gov said it appears that they are not working in an atmosphere of cooperation and full transparency. He argued that the Haitian migrants should be able to have properly outlined to them the process the government is embarking on. Well, I think that the Haitians should have um, had the opportunity to have clearly outlined to them what is the process by which the government is now going to embark upon. Yes, the law says that A, y, a and B and C must be followed, but what is the process that will be followed particularly and what dates are going to be, um, you know, these interviews and these, these phases executed. And so we don't want to have done that to be able to get properly discharge of our duty and their rights to legal advice on these issues. So they would have been, I think, better protected in the context of what really is a legal process with which they are now the center of. The group of 37 Haitians, including eight children, arrived in Jamaica on July 10. The Ministry of National Security has said a processing of applications for the group of 37 Haitian nationals who are seeking asylum in Jamaica should conclude in the next few days. The ministry said an application form has to be completed for each individual, which is a prerequisite to convening the eligibility committee to undertake the review of the documents. It said each applicant has to be interviewed separately, aided by an interpreter, to ensure full understanding of the process. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.